If you have a product that's a lower ticket item, it can be a challenge to run an affiliate program. The commissions are low, the margins are small, and there's usually a lot of competition. So how do you get your program to stand out and keep your affiliates excited with low ticket offers? Well, that's what today's episode is all about, my friends. Welcome to the Affiliate Guy podcast. If you want to grow your income, serve your tribe, and enjoy all the benefits of affiliate marketing and having your own affiliates, you're in the right place. Thanks for joining me today. Now let's get started. So on this podcast, we talk a lot about you know our clients, and we talk about our experience with running what are usually higher ticket items, you know, affiliate programs that are, you know, maybe for digital courses that are $500, $1,000, $2,000. But I've also worked with, you know, companies like Shutterfly and Adidas, other programs where the average order size is under a hundred bucks. You know, the average order size at Shutterfly, you know, the average product at Shutterfly is well under a hundred dollars, you know, greeting cards for five bucks, a photo album for 30 or 40 bucks. You know, Adidas, I just bought a bunch of like now they were on sale, admittedly, but I, I have a really hard time finding shoes that fit me right. And Adidas is like the only brand where I don't have to special order them. And so I found these shoes the other day and and tried them for you know a couple of days and went back and cleaned the place out. Like I think we got like four or five, I don't know, four or five pairs now. So it's like en- I mean it's enough shoes, hopefully to last me about three years, um, which is awesome. So and I'm gonna tell you right now, if I find more, I'm gonna buy them. I'll have 10 years worth of shoes because it's so hard for me to find them. And, you know, these shoes are like 40 bucks. You know, that's, these are lower ticket items. So we're going to talk today about the difference between high and low ticket to start with, both from an affiliate perspective and from an affiliate program perspective. And then I'm going to share, I think I've got 10 things that you need to do to run a lower ticket affiliate program. So excited to uh, to talk about that today. So let's talk about from the difference, first of all, between a high ticket and a low ticket affiliate program. So, you know, products that are, say, more than $500 versus products that are under 100, 200 bucks. This applies even, you know, things that are 17 bucks, $27, $37, $47. There's a middle ground there that we're not really going to touch on today because basically you're going to kind of hybridize the things that we typically talk about with the higher ticket items and the lower ticket items. So from an affiliate perspective, a high ticket means you're going to make more money in less time as an affiliate. You know, your commissions are going to average between two and $400 per sale. So you only got to make, you know, let's just go with 400 bucks. You know, this is on a thousand dollar product at a 40% commission we can go higher and say 800 bucks. Let's just go 500. Make this easy math for me. $500. You only have to make 10 sales a month to make what the average American income is. You only have to sell 10 items and you make $60,000 a year. That's roughly what I believe the average American household brings in right now. Last I checked, you only need to make a few sales. You know, you don't need to drive as much traffic to your offers to make good money. So those are some of the pluses, right? On the minuses, you know, higher ticket items typically come with stiffer competition. You know, there's going to be more competition and it's usually going, you're going to be going up against some of the big boys, you know, and big girls in the, in the affiliate marketing world. You usually need to learn. You've got to really master skills like copywriting to get people to take action. You need to incentivize people with bonuses. We talk about that. So just go search affiliate bonuses at mattmcwilliams.com and you'll find tons of information about how to put together a bonus package. Why do you need to do those things? Because it's a thousand dollar product. It's a two thousand dollar product. You know, I heard recently. I think I shared this before, probably about fifteen episodes ago. But the average American, if they had a five hundred dollar house or car repair, I think it's like right at fifty percent of Americans could not write a check to cover that. They would have to go into a little bit of debt. They would have to, you know, use a credit card to be able to do that. So if they have less than $500 in disposable income on average, you're going to have to do some convincing, you know, and even people who might have, say you got $2,000 in the bank and you're selling a thousand dollar course. You're asking someone to make the decision to take half of their entire savings and invest it into this product. So you better be a good copywriter. So again, I say that's a minus because there, that's a barrier. You know, you've got to get good at that before you can promote it. Now, as an affiliate manager, what are some of the advantages to higher tickets? 
Well, it's easier to offer big prizes. You know, with a $2,000 course, if you're pretty sure that someone's going to sell, you know, a hundred of those, it's pretty easy to offer a $50,000 prize to your top affiliate. It's pretty easy with a higher ticket item to say, you know, a $2,000 course, or even a, let's just go a thousand dollar course. It's pretty easy to say, if you make 25 sales, that's $25,000, they're going to make 10,000. If it's a 40% commission, you make 25 sales, you're getting a $3,000 bonus. It's easier to offer large commissions naturally you know, 40%. Typically, most higher ticket items like digital courses, they have a lower cost of goods. Now, the exception to this would be coaching, you know, like in our program, our coaching program, Your Affiliate Launch Coach. You can find out more about that, by the way, at youraffiliatelaunchcoach.com. We just give our affiliates a $3,000 flat commission. We typically make between twenty-five dollars and $28,000 per client in a given year. So that's a little bit over a 10% commission. And that's pretty average. Typically with coaching, 10% average. Why? Because there's a higher cost of goods. There's no shipping or anything like that. I'm not paying out stuff, but it's a high investment of my time or or our coach's time. So those are some of the advantages as an affiliate manager. You know, again, bigger prizes, larger commissions, a lower cost of goods. And, you know, you can pay out, you know, there's usually not really things like margin and factoring in shipping and customer service and all that stuff on on any kind of a scale. Typically with a digital product, your customer service costs are going to be about the same whether or not you have, you know, 50 people or 100 people. They're not going to dramatically go up, right? You know, as far as downsides to the higher ticket items, you've got to work harder as an affiliate manager. You've got to you've got to help them. All those things we talked about, right? You've got to acknowledge the competition and help your affiliates find ways to stand out. You've got to help them develop bonus packages and help them with copywriting, giving them really good swipe copy and teaching them how to use it and teaching them how to promote. So you got to spend a lot more time training your affiliates. That's To me, that's an upside. I, I, I say it's an upside because I love doing that. I love doing that, but it's a downside because it does take more time. The reality is that audiences need lower ticket items, okay? You have to have some cheaper products. Like in my world, we recommend, you know, $2,000 courses and we sell courses ranging from $500 to $2,000 and we sell our coaching program, which I just said, you know, you're going to pay between twenty five and 28000 for us to help you, you know, build the seven-figure affiliate program. It's clearly worth it, but it's a higher investment. But if you're just starting out, well, you want to you know what microphone I use. So we recommend the, you know, $70 or $80 microphone. Well, what is the software you use? Well, this is $20 a month. This is $50 a month. This is $9.99 a month. What are the tools that you, you know, you bought? Well, I bought this that's 40 bucks and this one's 20 bucks. And you can, you can get this tool, you know, for $20 a month that'll really help you. And from an affiliate perspective, the first obvious advantage to promoting low ticket items is that you don't usually need to do a whole lot of extra work to convince a person to buy the product, or you don't have to offer bonuses and things like that. A lot of low ticket items, they're impulse buys. So it's easier to sell. And by promoting lower ticket items, you'll usually be able to make more steady sales if you're promoting good products. So, you know, if something costs 30 bucks a month or like, you know, we promote ConvertKit, you know, for example, you know, that's the recommended email service provider that we use is ConvertKit. And so, we recommend them. I think you can get started with ConvertKit for free up to like a thousand subscribers. But even after a thousand subscribers, I think you're going to pay like 10 bucks from like a thousand to 2000 subscribers. And then I don't even know what we pay, but it's not a significant amount. I, I, I don't think, I think we pay like a thousand dollars a year, you know, pretty big list. And I think, I think it's just over a thousand, I don't even know. It's between a thousand and $1,500 a year. It's definitely not more than 1500 And so that's a pretty low cost item, you know, in the scheme of what we're getting. And so when we promote that, though, and you go buy, you know, you go build your list to 3,000 people, 4,000 people, and you're paying them 20 bucks a month or whatever it is. Don't quote me on that price, but I'm not entirely sure what it is for 4,000 subscribers. But you're, you know, let's just say you're paying them 20 bucks a month and we're getting a commission on that of $8. Your $8 plus another person's $4 plus another person's seven plus it. Somebody else is like us and they're paying you know, the equivalent of a hundred bucks a month. And so we're getting, you know, 40 bucks there. And next thing you know, we're getting 500, a thousand dollars a month, just consistently. Now, the obvious disadvantage (laughs) is that you need to send a lot of traffic to make enough sales to bring home a decent income. A $20 product at a, you know, a 10% commission, you're making two bucks. 
So to get to that average American income, you got to make 2,500 sales a month. That's probably not going to happen with most products. Now, from an affiliate manager perspective, well, the lower cost means lower commissions. You know, it's the converse of what we talked about earlier with the higher ticket items. Secondly, it's harder to find margin. It's harder to find margin. What I mean by that is, let's look at, I'm going to pick something on my desk here. Okay, I've got my coffee mug here. Now, this mug is a Zig Ziglar coffee mug. So I think it was like 25 bucks. Zig's company actually sent me a bunch of these. So I got it for free, but I think it's, I think they sell them for 25 bucks. Let's just say it's not a special mug. It's just a regular good coffee mug that, I mean, this thing has kept my coffee warm for the last three hours. I'm still got like three more sips to go. So it's 17 bucks. I don't know how much this costs to make, but let's just say, you know, it's, it's a Yeti. Uh, I don't know, maybe they sell for 20 bucks. We'll go 20 even. Let's just say it really does cost $5 to make. And then on top of that, they've got to have, they've got to have either the machinery or the people who pack it and put it in the thing. Let's just say that costs a dollar per unit. Well, already right there, we're down to $14 margin on a $20 product. Sometimes though, this is probably a bad example, but sometimes you have a product that costs $20 and it costs $12 cost of goods. And then another dollar. And then you've got to factor in things like, okay, what if it comes cracked and there's customer service? Every unit they sell is, you know, let's just say 10% of people have a customer service issue. So that means, you know, every 100 units that you got to account for the fact that you're going to spend, you know, 150 minutes on the phone, things like that factor in. What does that cost? So maybe you're at 10 bucks on a $20 product. You offer a 40% commission on that. You're only making $2 as the company. So it ought, you know, it's harder to find that margin. You know, with these lower ticket items, there's often a lot of competition in the niche with other programs, including Amazon, which is huge. You know, when you have a lower price product, odds are either your actual thing or, you know, a very similar product is on Amazon. And that's really hard to compete with. Lastly, it's just not as exciting, you know, typically coffee mugs, commodity items, shoes, clothes. You know, it's not as exciting from a, an affiliate perspective as $2,000 product, $1,000 thing, you know? Well, again, a lot of times they're commodity items. And so they're just not as exciting. So from an affiliate perspective, the question, of course, is should you promote high or low ticket products? Well, as you can see, both low and high ticket products have their advantages and disadvantages. Like don't discount low ticket products just because they pay a small commission. If they serve your audience, then it's a good product to promote. When I promote this microphone, I don't know, we sell like two of these a month and I make like $5.75, 12 bucks maybe on the high end. I I mean, over the course of an entire year, it's barely going to pay for a meal at Ruth's Chris for just me. (laughs) Maybe for me and my wife. Actually, no. Last time I went there, we spent like 200 bucks. So it's not even going to pay for that, right? It's not a huge thing. I don't go out of my way. But if somebody says, hey, what microphone to use? I tell them, go to mattmcwilliams.com forward slash toolbox, click the link. You can find the microphone there, right? I don't discount this just because of the small commission. I'm promoting a good offer that converts really well and I'm serving my audience. So the final answer there as an affiliate is you should promote both. And as an affiliate manager, your job is to get potential affiliates who might be adverse to promoting low ticket items to see that, to see the value in doing both. This is not an either or, it's a both and. So it's not, well, I only promote high ticket items. Well, what about lower ticket items so that you can reach some people? You can turn them into buyers. If somebody buys this microphone through me, they're a buyer now. We have a connection that's gone to a next level and they've spent $70. Why won't they spend 500? Why wouldn't they spend a thousand over time? So what are some of the things that you need to do to run a low ticket affiliate item? I'm going to share 10 things that you need to do. If you're going to run a successful low ticket program or you've got a product that's under a couple hundred dollars, you need to follow these 10 things. Number one, follow the basics. Like you still need to run the basic playbook. All of the basics still apply. Okay. The things that you need to provide your affiliates. we got an episode coming up on that. You still need to teach your affiliates. You still need to coach them. Those three C's that we talked about. If you missed those, go back and listen to the series. I did the three C's of successful affiliate programs. And I talked about contest communication and coaching. Follow the basics, okay? If you do nothing else, none of the other nine things I'm going to suggest here, 
follow the basics. Number two, go as high as you can on commissions. I'm going to link to a video that I did for a client years ago on how to determine the right affiliate commission. I'm going to put the link in the show notes. I'm not going to go through that, but the basic process is you need to, you know, you need to be competitive in your niche and you need to go as high as you can that fits the others, you know, in the video, I, I walk you through it. So, but go as high as you can. You know, if, if you're at 20% and your competition's at 25%, get up to 25%. I'd rather you get more affiliates and more action, more sales, and lose that 5%. Because again, you're going to, oh, well, I'm paying 5% more. Yeah, but you're paying 5% of something versus 0% of nothing. We're making 100 sales a month of this low ticket item at 20%, and we can make 1,000 at 25%, or 2,000, or 5,000, or 100,000. Uh, that's worth it. Okay, so check out that video. It's going to walk you through step by step how to set up your commission and get, get the perfect commission. Number three, position your offer as a lower priced alternative, okay? If this makes sense in your niche, if your product is $40 and your competition is $200 and $500, this gives their audience options. Maybe it is a cheaper version. Maybe it's a cheaper product. I, I give you an example. I use a, a podcast, the way my studio is set up, I use a podcast boom mic arm. I think it might have cost me $13. You can go out and spend hundreds of dollars on these things. I didn't need the hundreds of dollars version. It wouldn't even work for me. So I could say, hey, if you've got a certain setup and you know, and you want the best of the best that does all these fancy things, go spend $300 or pay 13 bucks and give, you know, here's an option for 13 bucks. This works great with comparison sites and review sites and resources pages where you know, I do this a little bit on my resources page where I'm like, hey, here's the premium version. It's $1,000 a month. Here's the cheap version that's $20 a month. And here's the middle version that's $100 a month. So find a way to position your offer as a lower priced alternative. It doesn't even need to be the exact same thing. A boom mic is a boom mic is a boom mic. You know, or what are these called? Boom arms or I don't know, whatever. Mic, microphone arm, whatever this thing is called here that, you know, like attaches to my desk and I can swivel it around and, you know, all that stuff. I can move it. Yeah, I can move it really, really close or really, really far from my, you know, from my my mouth with just a little flick of my wrist, <laughs> whatever this thing is called. But maybe it's something where they're actually slightly different products. You know, I'll give you an example of that. Like you have a product like a ClickFunnels that does like a thousand different things, but then you've got lead pages that kind of just does really a couple of things. It doesn't have all the same features and they're really, it doesn't even really do funnels, but all I need, you know, maybe all your pers the person needs to start with is a simple sales page and an opt-in page. And for, you know, basically for, I don't know, whatever, 50 bucks, hundred bucks a month, you can get it versus 300 bucks a month. So position it as a lower priced alternative. Fourth, be smart with your contests and prizes, okay? With low ticket offers, affiliates aren't looking for these massive $100,000 contests, right? But a little something, something goes a long way. You know, if it's a $50 product and you're offering a 20% commission, it's a $10 commission, let's just say that you're basically splitting, you know, the margin. So you make 20 bucks, you have a $30 cost of goods, you make 20 bucks and you're basically splitting that. Based on that, if you make a hundred sales, you know, you're going to get a, you know, a $200 bonus or something, or, you know, your top affiliate this month is going to get a thousand dollars and, you know, just be smart. It, it really comes down to numbers. You know, what can you spend? I would rather you be a little bit low on commission with some good incentives and room to give bigger affiliates a higher commission, room to eventually raise your commission, than going high and not having any room to do any of that. You can always raise commissions. It is really, really hard to lower them. Your affiliates will get really upset, even irrationally sometimes. Well, we're at 25 and our, let's just say we're at 25 and, you know, our, our best competition is also at 25, but we lower to 20, they'll leave and go to the other one even if they might make more money promoting you because you convert better or whatever. Five, stand out in ways beyond commissions, okay? If you really just don't have the room to go to 25 when, you're, when your competitors are at 25, stand out in other ways. I mentioned earlier, the three C's, right? Communicate, make your affiliate program super fun. 
contests. Make it super fun with the contest. Maybe you can't give away, you know, tons of money in the contest, but you can say, hey, you know what? Every quarter, our top five, we're going to get together and talk about how to, we're going to do a mastermind. So you want to be in that top five. Every month, you know, maybe the prize is like, okay, every month our top affiliate, you know, we're going to give you some product. So that doesn't cost quite as much money as, as maybe giving away, you know, money. I don't know, but stand out ways that, that are super fun. Coach them. I mean, golly, if you're the affiliate manager that's helping me make more sales, even if you're a little bit lower on commissions, I'm going to remember that. I'm going to stick around because I don't want to miss your coaching. Every month you're doing a webinar and you're sharing strategies with them. That's huge. That is huge. That is a reason to stay. So keep giving your affiliates reasons to stay. Sixth, build an army. You know, this is like we've, I, gosh, I shared this before about the future of affiliate programs and how it's, it's building an army of small, of medium, and a few large ones, building this army of affiliates. I'll link to that episode in the, in the show notes, but you have got to expand beyond your personal network. You've got to build an army of affiliates, affiliates that you know, affiliates that you don't know, small affiliates that make one sale a month to start with, affiliates that aren't even making any sales to start with. You've got to expand if you're going to be successful with a low ticket product. Seventh, I want you to consider working with some non-traditional or maybe some affiliates that, like we don't want to work with these types of affiliates with higher ticket items. And I don't talk a lot about them because most of you have a higher ticket offers typically. But coupon sites, co-red sites, other types of affiliates you might not be using. You know, co-red sites, these are people who are promoting other products and then they promote your offer in conjunction with their offer. Okay. So let's say an affiliate is promoting, you know, homeowners insurance. And if it's a new home purchase, you know, that's one of the questions we ask, they might want to include like, Hey, do you want to get information on mortgages? What about if it's not a new purchase, might want to get, op, you know, option on learning more about refinancing. Maybe you're promoting someone else's free training. And then the person also one clicks to offer to opt into your webinar for example. There's all sorts of ways that you can do this. You can have affiliate, you know, other companies that might do order bumps and they're order bumping your offer. Now, the key to this type of thing, you know, co-reg, and it doesn't work typically in retail as much. Make sure the people that are opting in for the initial offer are a good fit. Otherwise, it won't work and you'll end up with a bunch of junk leads, a bunch of junk sales, all right, or just a really low conversion rate. So again, you don't want to offer people who are applying for homeowners insurance on an existing home like that they are, they've owned for years. You don't want to offer them a mortgage. That doesn't make any sense. You don't want to offer a new purchase refinancing. That doesn't make any sense. You'll just get crap leads. Coupon affiliates, okay? This is exactly what they sound like. These are affiliates who promote deals and coupons to their audience. They cater to customers who are looking for a discount or sale. People will do irrational things to save $2 on a $17 purchase. We know that, right? We've all done that. My wife is like the queen of this and I love her for it because she saves us like thousands of dollars per year. But to be clear, if you don't currently have coupons or discounts, I'm not saying you need to create coupons just to use this type of affiliate. Some products should never be discounted. I don't believe $2,000 and $1,000, $500 courses should ever be discounted. But retail products, it's so common that if you're already doing it or you think you want to do it, then you definitely want to use these types of affiliates. And so key thing here, you want to make sure these types of affiliates don't steal the commissions from the original referring affiliates, all right? It's your job to ensure that both affiliates get credit for the sale. It's a long and complicated thing. I don't have time to get into it, but I'm going to share a video in the show notes that actually will walk you through. I think the title of the video is like, there's a better way than first click or last click, you know? And so it, it kind of walks you through what to do with coupon sites. The next type of affiliate is a loyalty affiliate. These can be a very effective type of affiliate. They're called loyalty affiliates because the people that they reach are extremely loyal to them. So companies like Ebates, I think that's the one that my wife uses. You know, so somebody goes through, like when she goes through and books a hotel, let's just say we're going to spend, you know, $1,000 on a hotel, you know, for three or four nights, you know, we'll get back like 90 bucks cool. It's like free money, you know, or 50 bucks. In this case, Ebates is the affiliate. So they make money by encouraging loyal subscribers to purchase through them. 
with the reward being that the customer gets a percentage back. And so essentially what they do, and I've worked with tons of loyalty affiliates like Ebates, they get 5% of of the purchase. So they get a 5% commission or 10% commission, whatever it is. We'll just go with five. And they're going to take half of that and give it to the customer. So you go buy a $1,000 hotel, you're getting 25 bucks back. Now, that's super easy. You got to monitor these loyalty affiliates to make sure you're getting a positive ROI though, okay? You know, if people are just basically using the loyalty site and something they were going to buy anyway, that doesn't necessarily make you money. Also, similar to coupon sites, you have to be careful that they don't steal the commission from the original referring affiliate. Now, I walk you through in that video, so same principles here, but don't let these warnings scare you. These types of affiliates can be extremely valuable. Okay, you just have to manage them, you know, a little carefully. Nonprofits, you know, nonprofits, uh, charitable organizations, parent-teacher associations, all types of these, like we've used these very effectively. I mean, I think about Shutterfly's affiliate program. We did more than 8 million in sales just through nonprofits in the second year of the program. They use affiliate promotions as a fundraiser. So they tell their organization that a percentage of each purchase, their affiliate commission is donated to the organization. So, I mean, basically, (laughs) I mean, here it's super simple. The nonprofit's like, hey, you probably are going to order Christmas cards anyway. Here's our recommended partner. When you purchase Shutterfly, you know, greeting cards, we get 13%. You go buy $200 worth of Christmas cards, which is not, I mean, gosh, that's less than we spend on Christmas cards. So, you know, because we do them for our business. So, I mean, you go spend $300 and they're making $39. So you get like $39 goes to your local, you know, pet shelter. That's pretty cool. That's essentially like making a $39 donation. And so they're great for getting your product in front of a captive audience, usually a slightly higher income. Typically, people who regularly support nonprofits are in the low to mid six figure range in terms of average income. And so, if you want to know how to work with nonprofits and learn how they benefit and how to use them, I'm going to put a video in the show notes that walks you through how to work with a nonprofit. The biggest thing I can say though, if you do nothing else, make sure you give them a quote unquote enhanced commission. They don't want to be just affiliates. They want to be special partners and know that you care about their success in raising money. So at Shutterfly, our standard commission was 10%. We gave them a 13% commission. All right, the next type of affiliate that works really well with low ticket items is remarketing or retargeting affiliates. Basically, these are affiliates who you basically outsource your remarketing or retargeting to an affiliate and you just pay them on a commission. So ideally, you would handle your retargeting in-house, okay? But it's, you know, it's expensive. Like you've got upfront costs, you got to hire an employee. This might be an option to consider. Essentially, you just pay them a commission to do your retargeting for you. That's really it. You know, you're handing them a high, like a very highly targeted list of people to market to. (laughs) <laughs> and so you're typically going to give them a smaller commission, you know, and they're going to spend the money. But it's like, you know, you think about this again, you have a $100 product or even a $50, we'll go with the $50 product. Let's just say you normally pay a $10, you know, 20% commission. And these are really highly targeted leads. They might only spend two bucks a sale to make five bucks. You're going to pay them a 5% commission, you know, even a $4 commission, they might only have to spend a dollar or two to make that sale. So something to consider. Second tier affiliates, you know, especially with low ticket items, this is huge. These are affiliates that are going to refer other affiliates to you. We do this, right? We have a list of thousands of affiliates. You are probably one of them. (laughs) And so we make money when we send out a thing saying, hey, we recommend this affiliate program, you know, go sign up go sign up for this affiliate program, we will get paid a second tier affiliate commission. And so if I refer three affiliates to a company and they sell $15,000 worth of product, we typically will get a 10% cut of that. We'll make 1500 bucks. It's one of the best ways to recruit new affiliates, by the way. So you definitely should be working with second tier affiliates. Um, And then lastly, sub-affiliates. You know, these are affiliates who are a part of a a sub-affiliate network. So you've got companies who have a network of affiliates who promote offers 
that the network brings to them. It's similar to second tier affiliates. It's just not as transparent. So the second tier or the sub affiliates do all the marketing and promotion to their list, to their audience, but the master affiliates gets all the credit and then they pay out the individual sub affiliates from their earnings. Listen, sub affiliate networks have a shady past. I would not do this in lead generation. I would only do this in retail, you know, because again, you don't have access directly to the affiliates. So I recommend staying away from sub affiliates if you don't have a full-time affiliate manager in place to handle the logistics, okay? They can be incredibly profitable, but they you got to do a little bit of hand-holding and monitoring to be worth the effort. All right, so that was number seven. <laughs> number seven uh, was a long one, you know, just talking about working with different types of affiliates, the coupon sites, the co-reg, loyalty, nonprofits, et cetera. Um, number eight, consider working with a network. We recommend share sale. Uh, you can just go to mattmcwilliams.com forward slash share sale. That's who we recommend as a network, especially if you've got a lower ticket retail or you know, even a digital product. If you've got a high ticket product, we don't necessarily recommend working with share sale. But if you're in a in a niche that's already on the network, you know, which is probably the case, consider working with share sale or or another network, you know, because it's that works especially well for lower ticket items. Ninth, create very short promo windows, okay? Odds are you've got an evergreen product if it's a low ticket item, but you still need to do some big pushes throughout the year, maybe four, you know, once a quarter. With lower ticket items, they have to be shorter, okay? No one is going to promote a low ticket item for two weeks like they would a $2,000 product, right? So do a a three-day contest, you know, just find the days that work best. Maybe it's Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Maybe it's Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Maybe it's Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. It doesn't matter. Do a quick five-day contest where you offer maybe an extra bonus or a, a discount, you know, a, whatever that might be. Do something where you're once a quarter, but again, it's three to five days where you're really pushing, pushing hard. Maybe that's, you know, affiliate with most sales in this five-day window gets this prize, you know, or gets a certain amount of money or the top three or things like that, right? And then 10th, and we've touched on this throughout actually, offer some affiliate exclusives. This is something that only affiliates can offer. You're not, you're not going to find it on your website. So, you know, if you've got a, let's just go back to ConvertKit, for example, you know, pretty low price thing, maybe, you know, ConvertKit, (laughs) if you're listening, offer a training that you only offer through affiliates. So when you sign up this month, you're going to get a training or a free month. You know, it could be a free month, like you just sign up for a regular program and your second month's free and then you pay from after that. It could be that if you upgrade, you know, if you upgrade to the yearly, this is only through affiliates, you upgrade to the yearly, instead of 12 months for the price of 10, you're going to get 16 months for the price of 10. So you're going to get four free months through this affiliate. You're going to get some sort of a bonus. It's like the... Not only are you going to get this, but you're going to get the Ginsu knife and the paring knife and the such and such thing. And this, you know, okay, it doesn't have to be like that, but what is it that they're going to get? Some sort of a bonus. And these are only through affiliates. So offer affiliate exclusives. So quick recap. Number one, follow the basics. Follow those three C's like we talked about. Number two, go as high as you can on commissions. Check out that video, how to determine the right affiliate commission. Number three, position your offer as a lower priced alternative, okay? Give their audience options. Fourth, be smart with your contests and prizes. You don't need the massive ones, but a little something goes a long way. Fifth, stand out in ways beyond commissions. Go back to the three C's. You know, I'm gonna put the links in the show notes, so go back to those three C's. Communicate, coaching, and contests. Six, build an army. Check out the Future of Affiliate Programs episode that I put in the show notes. Seventh, consider working with coupon sites and loyalty sites and, you know, nonprofits and second tier programs and things like that that maybe, you know, non-traditional type affiliates. Eighth, consider working with a network. Check out my link to share sale. I'll put that in the show notes. You know, that's who we recommend. I'm not saying you have to sign up with them. Just give them, a, you know, check them out. Maybe have a call with somebody there. Create those very short promo windows. That's number nine. And then 10th, offer affiliate exclusives, something that only affiliates can offer. That's how you work with low ticket affiliate programs. That's how you have success with low ticket affiliate programs. So if you haven't already yet, make sure you hit subscribe because I have got two amazing interviews coming up. We got 
one of our regular pieces of content, and then a bonus interview coming up. Next episode, I've got John Jenks on. We're going to be talking about the five steps to ridiculously consistent growth. I am so excited. I've been, uh, I was on John's podcast earlier this year. I've been wanting to have him on the show probably for about four years, and I finally got him on. So I'm super excited about that. I mean, he's been around, he's like one of the originals. He's been around for like two decades. He's old. <laughs> and then I've got my friend, Dory Clark. Fun fact, she and I were born in the same hospital in a small town in North Carolina. Just to make, and then we got to know each other. And the very first affiliate promo she ever did was our stuff uh, about six or seven or eight years ago. We're going to talk about how to be a long-term thinker in a short-term world. I think it's super important for entrepreneurs to hear this message. So, Make sure you hit subscribe so you don't miss those interviews. They're coming up here soon. And uh, I'm excited. I am super excited about those. So I will see you in the next episode where we're talking about those five steps to ridiculously consistent growth with John Jenks. I'll see you then. Thank you so much for listening today. Remember to check out all of our deep dives into affiliate marketing at theaffiliateguide.tv. And if you have a question, ask it at asktheaffiliateguide.com. Who knows? Maybe you even be featured on an upcoming episode. And lastly, if you haven't yet, make sure to leave a rating and review wherever you're listening to this episode. See you soon.